Hey guys, real quick, uh, just a note. We were installing the engine and everything went fine, everything went smoothly. Uh, the engine is in. There will be, unfortunately, two more videos, this one and the next one, before the engine installed. If you do wanna see the engine installed, uh, you can skip to the second video. That'll be out in a couple days. I've got more editing to do to all that uh, footage. And I also need to create more of these just to explain what's going on in the two videos just so people aren't real lost if they're not watching all the videos. So there will be three videos in total of the engine install, including all the technical stuff like installing the clutch flywheel, the clutch pivot pin and the transmission, installing the actual transmission on the engine, and then actually installing the engine into the car. So, like I said, if you wanna see the engine just being installed, just go to the second video. I uh, would appreciate if you watched this one as well too, though if there is information in there, if you guys need any information, but. So we will go ahead and cut to that footage. Welcome back guys to another episode of Dad Bod Garage. Got a couple of friends here, it's Bernardo and Josh. Um, they're gonna be helping me get this together and finally have all the bolts that I needed. Um, I did have to turn some down at work and I'll show you those in just a little bit. Today, hopefully, this will be going in on my last video where we had the snag where I didn't have the right bolts. Um, so we will be installing a flywheel, finally, the clutch, transmission, uh, I got some parts to install on the transmission also, um, that I'll show later. Um, that hopefully we get the transmission made it up and then back in the car. Don't any closer because I'm gonna be fucked otherwise. Now we got at least a millimeter of clearance on all those. That'll be good. go too deep, crank will turn. It will definitely get stuck. Yep. But then if you start, if you turn it, you start it over, it'll just self-clearance. Yep. And then it'll all be good. Don't take that as an advice. Seriously, don't. Mm -hmm. Please don't. Unless you like to live dangerously. Yep. But seriously, don't. <laughs> it's not advised. All right, so. We'll be putting on this flywheel. We've got brake cleaning to clean it off. Uh, you want to make sure you do that so there's not any contaminants um, to get into the actual final surface itself. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. It's going to slip. It's gonna wear prematurely or may not even grab at all. And who makes this flywheel? Uh, that is an FX FX Racing, I think it's called flywheel. You can find it on eBay, Amazon, wherever. Um, Cheap kit for these cars. They're known for holding 500 horsepower reliably, at least for a little while. I know people that drift with them and they hold the power just fine for even a couple years on some of those guys that's constantly clutch kicking it. But uh, the one I went with is a six puck uh, unsprung hub, uh, regular, just a regular pressure plate. It's nice and blue. I like blue. Is that, is that a spec or? This is actually just a, I think it's just a rebranded Saks Clutch. Oh. But it's not marked anywhere, but it's all, it was all just part of the kit. But again, that'll also have to be cleaned uh, on the surface here with brake clean just to make sure there's no uh, grease and cosmoly and whatever they put on there to keep it from rusting. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then the actual part that's going to help hold the power and probably chatter like a mofo because the clutch kicker. it does not have springs and it's a single mass flywheel so it's probably going to chatter like crazy but it's a street car it's not my daily it's meant to be loud it's meant to be fun which it will be hopefully if it's not i'll just burn the entire thing on the ground so what we need to do is we will get to clean this flywheel off, which is super easy. Make sure there's nothing flammable around here or anything to start a fire before I spray this. Otherwise it will catch fire. 
Yeah, you better be careful. There's a Fiero out there. <laughs> Somehow the fire will make it over there. Just burn the Fiero to the ground. It's in the name. It's just out of order. Let's clean all that off. To be able to tell when it's all off because it'll all be the same color. There won't be any um, greasy spots left. So you want to make sure you get all up into the corners and stuff too. This looks like it's got a little bit of chattering on there, but it shouldn't affect anything. So a little bit more on there because the affects. I thought that the way you cleaned this is you just installed it and then dumped the clutch. <laughs> that is the uh, redneck way to do it, which. Works for some people, I suppose. Yep, that looks good. Let's go install that. I will clean the presser plate later. Um, for the time being, that's going to be plenty because that's all it really needs to be clean. I'm going to try to avoid handling this as much as possible. But no promises because it looks like it still needs clean, but it should be fine for the time being. There is one hole that's a little bit bigger that goes on his doll down here on the crank, uh, just to make it make sure it lines up. Um, so, luckily, even sitting on the tire, it all is far enough away that I can place it on there, and it will stay there for a second. Just for a second. Just for a second. No fall. Any minute. Nope, we're good. Okay, we're good. <laughs> but these are the bolts that I machined down at work. Um, I had to take roughly 20 millimeters off of these because the ones I had were either too short or these ones were too long. So I compromised and I just made these ones shorter. And those are grade what? Bolts? These are grade 12.9 bolts. Uh, these are the factory ones that come with these engines. Uh, when you have the dual mass flywheel, a lot of the kits will sell uh, grade 10.9 and they'll actually stretch quite a bit more. But I opted to go with these ones just so I know that the clamping force is going to be consistent to what's factory. Um, at least that's the thought anyways. So all of these bolts will get locked tight, which... What the hell? It's like a fucking glue stick. Yeah, that's weird. It's not like glue it's stick, new. it's lipstick. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... You just want to put a little bit of this on here. You don't have to go crazy with it. It just tells you to put a line right on the side of it. This is the gel stuff, so it does harden kind of like a paste inside there on like the liquid stuff, which is good on this, especially because those holes go all the way through into the crank case. And if you don't have something like that, you may develop an oil leak going into there. And then your clutch will die. And then your clutch will die an inevitable death. And that's not good because friction material does not like oil. Friction material absolutely does not like oil, especially, well, not especially, but this copper ceramic one will definitely die. So, keep putting all these in, and then I will torque them. And these are all supposed to be torqued to 77 foot-pounds per the BMW spec, and since they're the same grade bolt, I'm gonna rely on that because engineers thought of it and I am not an engineer. Yet. 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 Hopefully. That one I might have put a little much on there, but I guess that's what it's gonna get. So this really is like a lipstick, holy crap. <laughs> Except I'm tempted to lick it because it kinda looks like one of those juicy drop pops. Oh, yeah, give it a <laughs> or like those whistle pops. They have like the parrot on the on the commercial and stuff, but I will refrain from doing that because it probably doesn't taste as good as it looks. That's what she said. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I've never heard that one, <laughs> but I don't know what kind of parties you go to, so you know that, that dad life, I'm not allowed to have that kind of fun anymore. <laughs> Those years are way past me now apparently. So almost have all of these halfway in. I 
it almost smells like candy, really, which is really bad. <laughs> That's really poor product design on Loctite's part. You should just lick the tip. That's what she said. Yep. See, that's a better, that's a, that's a better joke. <laughs> I don't know, the other one's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we call bias, Bernardo. But I guess it works towards me too, doesn't it? So. so close. I'm glad I de bird all these because otherwise they might not go in that well. They seem to be doing pretty well so far. I'll tell you what, the gel stuff goes on a lot better than the liquid. The liquid stuff. Yeah, the liquid stuff, really you're like, yeah, you're trying not to keep them dropping all over the floor, and then you're like, if I get it on the face of the bolt, is it gonna, or the bottom of the bolt? Is it gonna like glue itself to whatever I'm bolting this to? This stuff is like this little bead. It's like a glue stick, like I said. Maybe that's why I'm inclined to eat it. No, I didn't <laughs> eat glue sticks as a child. <laughs> but Let's chomp down on it. Oh sure, the very last one's gonna be the one. Are all the other ones just uh, bottomed out? Yeah. Loosen all the other ones. That could be it. But they're like already locking themselves up. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Let's, uh, grab this guy and see if we can get a little more turk on it. More turks. Twerk it real good. There we go. That might have had a little burr on it or something. Yeah, Always the last one though. Yeah. Hey, cross thread <laughs> or tight, torque is torque. Just torque it a little extra. <laughs> one um, more uga. Yeah. And then you do still want to do that cross pattern even though I'm not torque coming out. Because otherwise, there's a chance you could warp stuff. And you don't want to do that. Usually I like to go around twice and torque all these, kind of. So now those are ready to be torqued. So I put this back together. And as I mentioned, at least I think I mentioned, I want you to torque these at 75 foot pounds. This is a Harbor Freight torque wrench, don't judge me. It's got a thing in the box that says it was in spec five years ago when I bought it. Good as new. Close enough. Yeah. I'll know when it comes through the, the tunnel and takes my legs off. <laughs> whether or not the torque spec is correct or not. It'll happen. It'll it'll go in this order. It'll leak oil through the bolts. And then it'll slip the clutch. And then the clutch will overheat. <laughs> and then everything's going to come out. All then right. it'll take your legs off. Josh, if you want to have this... Fancy tool here. Just put that guy there and then wrap one. I'm just gonna push down. Double click method is the best. I wish I had a paint pen because I would mark all these, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you don't say that. <laughs> it's gonna be the last one, remember? I would be so upset. The, the last one. Was... I think I would just go and set this motor out at the curb and be like, "Take yeah. it. I don't even care anymore." We can light it on fire next to the Fiero. Yes. Let me grab the turbo first. Yeah, I think we should save the turbo. <laughs> <laughs> worth it. I would think so. It's worth more than. The engine that's sitting on. <laughs> Alright, we'll do one more round. Just make sure that everything didn't false click. You gonna paint mark them? I don't have a paint marker. Yeah. 
I mean, it's not like it really matters because you're not going to be able to see them unless your flywheel comes off. Right, or I start hearing rattling noises, I'll definitely know what it was. Cool. So that is torqued. torqued. And we are ready to start putting the pressure plate and the clutch disc on. Now, because this gets asked all the time, which direction this guy goes. Right here. East. East. Do not put this towards the transmission. It will weld itself to the guide tube in the transmission. Wait, do it again, do it again. This guy right here will weld itself to the guide tube in the transmission. Make sure you put this side facing inward, just like that. Otherwise, you have a bad time. You'll either have to break the transmission off of the entire engine. I've seen it way too many times. This side always goes towards the transmission. So, in order to start installing that, we're gonna take this little fancy alignment tool here. This goes in through just like that. Slip that into that pilot bearing I replaced the last episode. And that's kind of not that tight, but it goes just like that. You want to try this other Maybe. one? That one has a smaller pilot oh, bearing does. thing on it. So, and then, as mentioned before, I need to clean this pressure plate off with brake clean. So we'll just do this on the ground real quick. Very gentle. We don't want to scratch the paint. Yeah. Especially on something nobody's going to be able we'll, to see. We'll lose concourse points for that one. Losing paint will throw off its balance. For sure. Oh, you scratch it now. No, oh, it's sitting on the, the fingers. Fingers. Alright. So now, I would say that's clean enough. This guy, see where the indexing dolls are. There's a hole right here next to the bolt hole where this doll goes. They're only going three different ways because there's three dolls on here. But if you want to line up, you should be able to go over that tool, line up those dolls, and it should sit on there just like that. And then if I would have remembered that I left the bolts inside, I would start threading the bolts on, but I didn't. So we're gonna <laughs> cut for just a second. I'm gonna go get those bolts. Three, two, one, go. All right, so now I've got the bolts that I had inside. Just these six pressure plate bolts around here, around the outside. Like I said, it'll be lined up on the dowel. Uh, tighten these all. You can do cross pattern like I was doing on the flywheel bolts. These ones are grade 8.8, .8, so according to the manual, uh, these ones are going to be uh, torqued to, I believe it was 18, 17, 18, what did I have to say? But you really 18 want, foot pounds. You really want to go even on those because it'll start shifting because it's spring loaded. Right. Cross, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so you want to do the cross pattern because there's one giant Belleville spring in here, which is attached to these, or not attached, but it's resting on these fingers right here. These fingers, when it's completely tightened down, should be completely flat, and they should be flat evenly. So you don't want to have like one section across from like one of the bolts sitting higher than the rest. All of these should be completely flat so that when it's in the transmission, it's not having to push further than it's supposed to, to try and engage, and also so that the uh, clutch grabs as normal. It won't slip or anything like that. If you have that like that, that's exactly what it'll do. It'll slip, it'll chatter, it'll probably eventually back off. But I'm just gonna tighten these all in a pattern like I did for the plyo bolts by hand first. Um, and then I'll torque them after. They're all uh, tightened up pretty well. They shouldn't take a whole lot. They do have Loctite on them to begin with. Um, so once you have them in, they will lock themselves in. And then you might be able to see it, you might not. As I'm tightening these, you can see the fingers kind of start to drop in. Um, 
I'm not seeing it a whole lot yet, but I might need to get these a little bit tighter beforehand. <clears throat> so it really start to drop in once the actual friction surface of the clutch uh, starts to contact that clutch disc in there. And then they'll start to flatten out. You can kind of see right now they're starting to go in a little bit here. Um, since I have the top two bolts tightened, it's starting to squish those in. So as I do this one, it should do about the same thing. And then make sure we don't tighten them too much. Stripping flywheel bolts would definitely not be a good thing to do. But you can see they are starting to flatten out a lot. And then once I torque them, it should be just about completely flat. Why no twin disc? Because I'm poor. <laughs> twin disc will come later. They're $850 to start, and then it's another couple hundred dollars to get the ceramic uh, clutch discs that you want. Otherwise, for what the $850 gets you, it doesn't offer very much actual torque capacity. And people have been running them at 475 horsepower and not even that much torque. And they've just been failing early because they didn't get the ceramic discs that they tell you to get in order to hold good power. So just about there, you can see they're a lot flatter now. I'm not getting overly tight right now. I'm just kind of, um, getting them all even, not putting a lot of pressure into the bolts, but if you try to do it all one go, you might snap something, which would definitely not be good. Right. I think that's all of them. I'll go around one more time just to make sure, and then I'll do the final torque sequence. I just noticed you have an AC unit on the wall. Extremely helpful. It uh, doesn't help very much in a garage that's not got an insulated door. And it also doesn't help that I didn't start it until half an hour ago. So I haven't had time to really cool stuff down. That's why we check. Especially when you can barely see it because it shoved up against the tire down there. So, 18 foot pounds, final torque sequence again going across. Which comes very quickly on this torque wrench because it's actually a little too big for that. You can barely hear it clicking, but it is clicking nonetheless and it is rated for this range. So. Could be worse. Could be 18 inch pounds. Yeah, and then they would uh, not register at all. Go around and one more time. Get them confused with foot pounds and accidentally strip the fuck out of them. Yeah, going from like <laughs> a, a pound and a half foot, like foot pounds to one and a half foot pounds to. I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not sure how you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Confuse them that much. Well, you see, you just you just read pounds and you just forget about foot versus inches. Ah. And you just look at numbers on the torque crunch. You're like, oh, this has the same number. That's fair. And then you strip the <laughs> shit. All right. At so first you're like, why isn't it clicking? And then it just strips. And then when a righty tidy becomes a oopsie, it's loosey. Yep. <laughs> Alright, so those are all torqued now. Wow, it was like right at the end of that. Alright. But, should be tight enough. Then you can pull this alignment tool out. This pulls right out. And it should have it aligned. This actually mimics the input shaft on the transmission over there on the floor. Um, so that should be aligned. Hopefully we won't have any issues aligning everything once they actually put the transmission on, which we're just about ready to do as soon as I swap out the pivot, or the clutch pivot pin, or clutch fork pivot pin, because the one they have in there is plastic. I have a brand new aluminum one to replace it. 
um, because they like to wear out, and once they wear out, you lose the clutch partially because then the engagement is not going to be as great since it'll be offset backwards. It's already a little worn down. So I'm going to install that, and I've got a brand new throw out bearing here. Always go with the sax one. It comes with one with the kit, but I don't know where it's from. I don't know how it's going to work, and these aren't that expensive, so replacing them is kind of a no-brainer because you don't want to be pulling a transmission just to replace the throw bearing because that is definitely not fun. So I just need to find the clutch pivot pin, which is one of these bags up here. Tap the old one out, tap the new one in, and then we can start reinstalling the transmission. All right, so got the transmission posts in here. This is actually the old one out of it. This is a Getrag. They are known to be so much worse transmissions to use for especially turbo applications. Um, they're not rated as high from the factory even. This one's rated for 250 foot pounds of torque. This one's rated for 310, but these have been known to go well into the 600s for at least a short time. Um, but I opted to go with the ZF just because it is stronger. But I will need to, I've got a new pivot pin for it. So these pivot pins is what the clutch fork rides on inside the transmission there. And the plastic ones that are in there are known for breaking or wearing down over time. This nub up top here likes to wear down. And like I was saying earlier, when that wears down, you lose some of the actual clutch travel. So you have to push the clutch in further for it actually to disengage the clutch. Um, so this actually solves that. Um, to take the old one out, there's a little recess pack here. You can see the back of it. And you can just do something like this. I'm just using a nut driver that's a little bit smaller than it. And then to get it out, just set that on the back of there. You can just kind of tap it out, hopefully. As long as I can steady this on there well enough. <laughs> Is it the transmission brake? No, fuck you guys. <laughs> Jesus. You fucking shoved the screwdriver right through it. I don't know the, the screwdriver is not on there anymore. <laughs> Do it again. No, you. Do it again. <laughs> That's hilarious. Is it still sticking out? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's what I get for buying cobalt tools. <laughs> so wait, the handle came off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, back I'll tap it back on. Just tap it through all the way. Take the handle off and pull it out from this side. Yeah, and then beat it back from the other end. I win. We're just gonna. Tap that little guy. That's uh. Now you can probably squeeze that. That's out. what Bob Ross would call a happy accident. Or at least break it apart. <laughs> <laughs> at least now it's got a relief hole. Yeah. <laughs> so now if I hit it with anything, it should shove all that plastic into that hole, right? Maybe. Hopefully. It wants to be a part of this transmission. Let's try this guy again. You're not gonna take that dream away from it. Put this big ass thing through it now. paid a lot for my eyes. I don't know what kind of black market dealings you're involved with. I mean, I think a black market would have been cheaper. <laughs> oh, yep. There she goes. Yeah, it came out violent. Violently. Did I get you? I think I hit your phone. Hell yeah. See? <laughs> Relief holes. See? This is what happens to them when they're in the transmission, totally unaided. 
<laughs> Just jam your screwdriver through it and you'll be fine. Yeah. So now we'll put this less messed up one in there. Hopefully. Oh yeah. Here. Still you can see how much shorter this one is actually. So minus the screwdriver hole, you can actually see how much more rounded that one is. So this one should look similar to this but it's had pressure on it over the years, so it's deformed it along with temperatures and everything else. It's just gotten gross over time. So, let's throw that over there. Rip on. Let's hope it slides up. All right. All right, so we got the pivot pin in finally. I ended up having to use a socket on an extension. It kind of marred up the outside just a little bit, but the only part we really care about is this tip here. Just the tip. Yep. Um, the best part. <laughs> but and then I went ahead and cleaned up the uh, tube right here along with the actual splines of the input shaft here. Just to make sure when it goes into the transmission there's not any... It still looks a little dusty, but it's just... I didn't clean it that well. Yeah, it's just surface rust. It doesn't hurt anything. And it wasn't... It, was a lot more pitted than that, so I got most of it off. Stuff that matters, because you're not gonna have the spines going all the way down to the bottom of that groove anyways. Um, so we're gonna put some grease just on the tip of there, a little bit on this tube here, and then just very, very lightly on the spines. You don't wanna have a lot um, on the spines, otherwise it'll fly out and it'll contaminate your clutch disc. Um, the grease I'm gonna be using is this CV Joint Lubricant. Uh, it's the gray stuff. At least it should be gray. I haven't opened it yet. But it's the stuff you get in CV joints. When you rip a boot, it's that dark grayish um, stuff that comes out of there. So I'm going to very lightly coat this, and then I'm going to very lightly coat that. And then we're going to put the clutch fork, which is in pretty good condition. Usually around these points here, they can crack and get fatigued just over time. These ones actually don't look bad. They look a little worn, but they're not. Uh, starting to dimple the outside of here, so I'm not going to worry about it just yet. Um, I'll have this car apart in the future, I'm sure, because I'll probably be putting a different clutch or a different transmission or other stuff in it later. So it's not my daily driver, so I'm not too concerned about whether or not the uh, trans is going to go out or anything like that. The clutch is going to be bad. So we'll go ahead and yeah, see, it's that real dark grease. You don't need a whole lot. Put a little bit right there, just so just it doesn't. The tip. Just the tip, and then we're gonna put a very light coating around here too, just so that throwout bearing has a little bit of grease to ride on. Again, not putting too much on. Doesn't need to be a lot. It just needs something to slide on. Get that shaft all. Ayo. It's nice and slippery. This you do not want it on the tip. We're not gonna be putting it on the tip. That goes in the bearing and the in the end of the crankshaft anyways so it'll have plenty of its own lubrication from that anyways so i don't want to do this without getting too much on there smear it on your hand smear it on my hand yes smear it all over your hand make your hand nice and slippery and then weird so we're not going to take that advice <laughs> um so I'm going to wipe this back off once I get it in the spines and everything. I'm going to clean this up very, very well so that there's not too much, like I was saying. You really just want a very light coat, just like I did on the guide tube there for the throw-out bearing. And I might even use the brush that I was using to pull some of the back out of the groove just so there isn't too much on there. So, and this will kind of work its way around as well. So, okay. I'm gonna very lightly wipe off a bunch of the excess. Again, don't need to have a bunch on there. Even wiping it off, you'll still have a light coating on there, so it'll be just enough. You just don't want any grit or anything in there that's gonna hang up that clutch disc. Use this, just pull it out. Get 
and that also helps reapply it into other grooves too. Alright, wipe it again. Pull a little more out of these grooves. Josh is pretty much just in the background here. <laughs> Bernardo got the camera. So Josh is just relaxing. Drinking beer. Back there. Back there, real quiet. Rocking the Crocs. Make sure you get the Crocs in there. Ow! With the socks. Extra protection. Crocs and socks. <laughs> <laughs> the non official sponsor of Dad Bod Garage. I'll make sure to bring my Crocs we are not. <laughs> we are not Play sponsored Crocs by here. Crocs. <laughs> so. We would like to be Crocs if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Crocs would be appreciated. Cool. So, you see those are very lightly greased. They can't tell in there, but it is very lightly shiny. So, there is grease on there. So, that'll be just enough to have the clutch just slide in and out. So, still have a light coating on the guide tube there. We are ready to put the throw out bearing this guy back on I need a little bit of grease over here too yeah so we'll put grease top and bottom on here just so it doesn't chatter up against the actual body of the throw out bearing here as well as this thing goes on the ring on the little bit of it yeah so slides over here So you'll put it in the groove that's on the pivot pin here, if you can get it in there. If it'll want to go in there. After I rub all the grease off of it. Just like that. So once that's in there, apply just a little bit more grease again, just the tip of it. Okay. Let's slide this guy back over here and through these guys and then up and over just like that. So that's gonna just sit there for a second. Again, I'm gonna apply grease to the top and bottom here and slide that on. Again, you don't need a lot, just enough to. Wait, isn't it over here? Huh? Isn't it on these tips? Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that goes there. Thanks, Bernardo. I have not touched one of these in quite a while. So, don't really do much there. All right. So, we'll slide this back in, and those two flats kind of guide it. So, that is technically in and installed. So, and then. Yeah. Bernard was trying to poke right there. That'll be where the slave cylinder pushes in and out. Um, this does not clip in anything because the pressure plate will be pushing back on this. So when that goes back, it'll go back with it. And then the fork that he's moving with his hand right there is what actually moves it forward and backward like he was showing. So this is ready to actually get bolted back up to the engine now. So we'll get that up in the air. Um, I'm gonna have to move one of the lift points that we did because it's actually in the way. And then we'll reinstall it. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, there will be another part coming in the next couple days. I have a little bit of editing to do with those. And then that will actually be when the engine is being installed into the vehicle. There won't be a lot of technical information compared to the last video. Uh, there will be a short time lapse, which I had like 40 minutes worth of time lapse video. I had to keep shortening up, um, speeding up the tracking. So there will be that video. But if you could please like, subscribe, and share the video. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Dad Bod Garage, uh, Garage Official. 
And then also we do have a Facebook page. Uh, it's just Dad Bod Garage. Um, give us a follow there. You can see updates, pictures, stuff like that. But again, thanks, and we'll see you next video.